One of the coolest use cases for plugins in MA2 is to build crazy custom setups. And as we saw in interacting with your plugins using Macros Chapter, macros are a great way for you to control your plugins and create kind of a user interface for your plugins in MA2. Now, what's cool is that you can also use plugins to create macros. And like that, you can not only use macros to control your plugins, but you can also use your plugins to create the macros that will later control your plugins. Neat, huh? Well, let me show you how you do that. And just up front, this is sort of tricky because you have to deal a lot with the right quotation marks. So I'll try to explain the tricks a little bit here along the way. But I think at the end of the day, all you want to do is probably just take this code and run with it. So copy and paste this over to your plugin and don't think about it too much <laughs> because this is actually sort of tricky. But at the end of the day, not that hard once you have figured it out. So I'm going to create this macro plugin. And now what this will do is once I start it, and I'll just run through it once so we can see what it actually does. It will create a macro for us, which actually sets wings, blocks, and groups by calling a function that we saw earlier. So if you remember back to the example plugin that allows you to set groups, wings, and blocks based on macros that you tap in MA2, we are sort of recycling that here. And the idea is that with this plugin, you could, in theory, build something that stores your current groups, blocks, and wings settings into a macro. So whenever you want to recall that value in your plugin or through your plugin, you can just tap this macro slot. And then that gives you sort of a group blocks and wings generator that allows you to store different presets as macros, if that makes sense. Let me show you. So it asks us for a macro number and I'm just going to hit four. And now we have a labeled macro in here. And if we right click on it, we can see all of these different functions that we have built into it using the plugin. So you can already see how powerful this is. This really unlocks the key for you to build completely custom systems where your plugins can kind of have functionality and you can control that functionality from your console using sequences or macros, but you can also use the plugin to create new macros to deal with your plugins. So like that, you can actually create some really powerful systems to help you create better shows. So let's check out how I did that. And by the way, if I run this plugin, the only reason why it's complaining is because right now we don't have the right plugin loaded. So you can see here, it's trying to use all of these functions, but attempt to call a nil value, it couldn't find these functions. But that's sort of besides the point. As we saw in the calling your plugins from macros chapter, once you created a function in a plugin and you ran this plugin, then you can call that function from a macro using just this pattern that we see here. So let's see how we can create these macros automatically. What I did here is in this main function, I first of all ask for the macro number and this should actually be enter macro number, not first macro number. And then it essentially creates this macro. And what's interesting is that this function takes a number where to place this macro, then it takes a label. And lastly, what's really interesting is this part because it actually allows you to pass in a table or a list of lines of code that you want to have in your macro. Now be warned, if you don't get the quotation marks right here, and before I started recording this video, it took me a little while to to get it right again but let's jump on that in just a second but you know that you're not doing it right when ma2 interprets these parentheses here as a user input 
So remember that in macros, when you want to create a user input, all you do is create these parentheses with the label of the input in between. So that's where it gets a little bit tricky. We need to be able to let Lua or rather MA2 know that this is actually an attribute that we're trying to set up here. So when you copy and paste this code, be sure to stick with exactly what I'm doing here. And what you also need to do is all of the function parameters that you want to put in here, they cannot be text. They can be numbers, they can be true or false, they can even be nil, I guess. <laughs> um, they can even be tables as long as they don't contain text. Because you can see here that, or rather up here, that we are getting into parentheses hell if you start adding any text in here. All right, before we jump on that and sort of try to understand how it works, let me just show you real quick how to create a macro. And that's mostly knowledge about how the, the commands in MA2 work. But essentially what we do here is go store ma macro one dot and then the macro number. Then we also label it. That's not that big of a surprise. Now, when it comes to adding individual lines in the macro, what you wanna do is store in that same macro, but then dot, and now you specify the line number back here. Then the same, or rather, once you have that line created, this is just an empty line, then what you do is you go ahead and use the assign keyword to set the command attribute and that will create this line of code in the macro and what's interesting here is that in the ma2 command to set any attribute we have to use the the doubly quotation marks and we'll take a look at that in the terminal window in a second what's interesting here then is that lua this Lua command, it also is fine with these single tick quotation marks as the command. But that's what I mean. This whole back and forth in here, this is a little complicated. So that's exactly why I created this function. You can just copy and paste this over into your code and you can also see how it's being used down here. And this works, you can see that, and if nothing else, just take this example plugin, copy and paste it over into a fresh plugin that you want to adapt, make sure it always runs, and then just adapt this step-by-step. -step. Now let's take a look at what happens inside of Grand MA2. So what we can see here is that we have this assigned macro 1.4, that's the macro itself, and then line three, and then slash command equals, again, the double quotation marks for inserting this command and then the Lua command itself is fine with just using these single tick quotation marks. And that's sort of the trick of how this works in the first place. Um, and that's also why we can't have any text because imagine that we wanna put text in here. We already use the single quotation marks to kind of let MA2 know which Lua command we want to execute and so we would have to use the double quotation marks, but then MA2 would think that the command that we're trying to set only goes from here until the beginning of the text. And that's why you can only use numbers, but as we already saw, it's no problem. At the end of the day, you can always translate these numbers using, for example, a table where you can just look up these different values. And so in this case, I think you need to be a little bit creative but this is the working example. This is how you can actually assign macros or create macros that then call your plugin. And like that, it goes full circle. And you can actually build some really powerful stuff with this.